family study and uh, sharing time um, on Wednesday night for the Central Point Church of Christ. Um, we welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. It is our sincere prayer that all of us have come today to uh, receive a word from the Lord um, that will help us be better today than we were yesterday and give us a greater hope for tomorrow. If you don't mind, we want to start this evening with a word of prayer. Will you bow with me at this time as we go before our Father and pray on behalf of this class, as well as several families have lost loved ones uh, over this past week <clears throat> and last week. We want to keep them in our prayers as well. So at this time, would you please bow with me? Our God and our Father, we come tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this day and all blessings therein. We're grateful today for your son, Jesus, who died for our sins. We're thankful for the church that you purchased with your blood, Lord that you're the head of, that's your body. Paul says that there's salvation in it, and there's not another name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So we thank you. We are sincerely humbled by your forgiveness and your patience. We're praying tonight for the Satcher family, um, for the Tate and Morton family, those who have lost loved ones, we ask you to comfort their heart, strengthen their hands. Uh, the Singleton and the Evans family, asking you to grant them traveling grace, those family members who shall be traveling to bury their loved ones. Sister Miles and her family uh, who lost their cousin, Father, we ask you to strengthen all of these families and comfort their hearts. We're praying tonight for uh, Amber Evans for overall well-being and health. We're praying for Brother Terry Sumla for healing, the McKinney's family for healing, praying for Chad Garrett that you will touch and heal his body. Bless Pam and her husband with traveling grace as they go to and from in visiting family and loved ones. We're praying for Sister Sierra Fields and her relocation for school in Springfield, Illinois, asking you to grant her favor in all things. We're praying tonight for Brother Dre Shannon's mother, Sister Aubrey, for her overall health and well being, and that. Uh, all of her tests will come back in good results and in her good favor. Now, Father, we ask you to bring back to our remembrance now the things that we have studied, that we will teach only those things that are found written in the book. Use my mind, my eyes, and my mouth in concert, that I will speak very plainly tonight and very clearly that the youngest heart and mind could hear and understand and obey your word. When it's yours to call and ours to answer, we ask for a peaceful hour in death, trusting to hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. This is our prayer now. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. I want to thank those of you who've been praying for my mother as well. That 93-year-old war horse is just, I mean, God is doing some miraculous things with her. And so I thank you so much for your prayers. And if you will please continue to pray uh, for my dear mother. All right, we're going to get down to it tonight. Question number six. Question number six. I challenged you on last week to prepare yourselves and make sure you study real hard and be ready uh, to jump in and, and share uh, your thoughts, share your findings. But you all know if you're not ready, you know I'm ready. And I got plenty of information here, uh, Sister Connie. Uh, I, I told my wife, I think I got about two and a half weeks of information here. <laughs> but uh, certainly we're going to take our time and we're going to deal with the word of God because we're not in a race. 
Uh, I am I am not a, I am not impressed or trying to impress anybody uh, by rushing through or trying to finish lessons. Um, we got all of our life to study the word of God. And so uh, this material, I believe, is a blessing. And I think this question tonight is one of the greatest thought provoking questions um, that we could consider. And uh, I feel it coming on me already. Uh, Brother Spence, I don't think we're going to get too far tonight, but I think I'm going to give some powerful principles and precepts uh, for us to understand tonight and that will bless our lives. The question is, and I thank Marcus, he does such an awesome job in putting our slides together and preparing things for us. We thank you so much, Brother Johnson, you and your family, your crew that works with you. All right, what are some things that God calls now, I want you to underline that word call, C-A-L-L-S, because it could have very easily been C-A-U-S-E. What are some things that God calls his children to do to deal with their problems? Let me read that again. What are some of the things that God calls, C-A-L-L-S, his children to do with their problems. Now, the first thing we understand from this sentence alone, without doing any research, without looking in the Bible, from this sentence alone, and what we have previously studied, we see and understand uh, by inference of this, this question that first of all, God is still supreme. God is still above man. God is still the one who's calling the shots. You need to get that in your mind. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, somebody on here, that if you just come to realize and accept the fact that you are not in charge, if you come to realize and accept the fact that there is a greater being than you, someone who created you, if you get come to realization that you can't handle things by yourself and realize that God is still the, the shot caller and the big baller, as we would say on the West Side, uh, Sister Desiree, he, he's, a, he's the shot caller and the big baller. And so he's still in charge. Now watch this, some things that God calls his children to deal with their problems. Now, let me deal with the fact that this term here calls uh, as opposed to calls. And, and the reason why we're thankful that God is still calling is because God is such a wonderful and merciful God. And God wants his love affair with man to be a genuine love affair. So he does not cause, C-A-U-S-E, he calls because God is still giving us a choice to whether or not we want to respond. And how many of you know tonight that the only time you respond the call of God is when you desire to please God? Oh, I feel some preaching coming here, Sister Kim. Listen, you will not please God without a desire to please God. You will not please God, Sister Miles, without faith. We know that. We went over last week, week, weeks before. Romans 10, 17, you know it well. It takes the word of God in order to birth faith in the heart of man. All right? So, so he calls us. He is still the God who is still giving us choice. And the reason why God wants to give us choice is because when we make our choice, Sister Youngblood, it proves to God where our heart is. When we make choices, cause your choice comes from that inner man, that man that we cannot see. I don't care what you dress up like on the outside. I don't care how much church garments you wear on Sunday. When you make choices, it really describes and shows and proves who the real person is on the inside. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just go to a buffet. Just go to a food buffet. I don't have to ask you what you like. When you start making your choices, I know what you like. All right, let's leave the buffet because you're trying to do like me and lose some weight. Let's go to the, let's go to the um, a circle of life, the, the personal arena of life. I don't have to ask you what kind of man you like. I don't have to ask you what kind of woman you like. All I got to do is sit back and look at you and watch you and see what you, what you bring home to mama, what you always hanging around. Because birds of a feather is going to flock together. 
Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. So my point to you tonight is, is that God wants us to make choices because our choices define who we really are. Because your choice is made from desires. Desires come from the heart, the cardia, the seat of man. All right? But watch this. The, the next thing we know without even going to any research, just an inference of this question, is that he says these things that God has called his children to do to deal with problems. So what you need to understand tonight is, is that you're going to have problems. Yes. Listen to the, look at the question. It infers that we are children of God, of the most high God. He who, who created heaven and earth. He who have all power in his hand. He who have power to give life and take the same. He who have power to not only take the life, destroy the life, but to destroy the soul. All right. Yes, we are his children. We are covered by his blood. First John 1, 7. It continues to cleanse us. All right. Yes, we are his chosen people, his royal priesthood. But the, the thing you need to understand tonight, watch this, and this is going to bless somebody. And if you take it and make notes, you're going to bless somebody else. The next time they call you at their pity party, you'll help them to understand that just because you're a child of God doesn't mean you're exempt from problems. Turn to somebody and tell them you're going to have problems. I need to tell somebody that. Somebody put that in the chat for me tonight. You're going to have some problems. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your pedigree is. I don't care how many letters you got behind your name, how many degrees you got on your wall. You're going to have some problems. Move out of the ghetto. Move up to Beverly Hills. Move up in a nice penthouse. You're going to still have some problems. Go out to the suburbs. Don't y'all know that the folk that ran out to the suburbs in the late 60s and early 70s, don't you know they trying to run back to the city now? Y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. Just wave your hand if you can. My point to you is trouble will come. Trouble is going to come. But the question tonight is, what are some things that God is calling on us to do in order to deal with our problems? Come on, talk to me, somebody. I talked long enough. Y'all see, I'm getting excited. I'm not going to let you in in a minute. You better get in where you can. Get in where you fit in. Come on, talk to me. What are some of the things God calls his children to do uh, to deal with their problems? Brother Miles? Yes. The first thing we have to do is take it to God in prayer. Whatever choice right. has to be made, whatever decision, take it to God first in prayer for his guidance and direction. Because he knows us best. He knows us inside out. And oh, he knows yes. what we need. He has our best interest at heart. And he wants what's best for us. Go on, Sister Connie. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang up my hat tonight, Sister Connie, and let you have a class because you on you on top of it. That you're exactly right. You are exactly right. Come on, Brother somebody Miles. else. Brother, can you hear me, Brother Miles? Sister, Sister Noten, Miles. come on. Yeah, just to add on to what Sister Connie said, um, and God tell up tell us if possible, try to get along with every man. Uh, I'm not quoting, mm -hmm. I'm kind of paraphrasing it now, you know. So uh -huh. we definitely would do as she said first, we'll go in prayer and then try very hard if it's possible to get along with every man. All right, very good, very good. And to, and to get along with other people, sometimes we got to do self-reflection. Man. Sometimes we got to do self-reflection. All right, one more person, one more person. Uh, Brother Miles, one of the things I believe is that we should trust him uh, above all yeah. other things that we come in contact with, no matter what, if we have trust in God, we can deal with any problem that we have. We know that he has the answers. And if we trust him, trust him to lead our lives, then you can't. I mean, what, you know, to trust God, he wants us to trust in him because he's watching over us at all times. Yes, sir. And also, yes, Brother Miles, I would just like to add on to what Hollis said. Sometimes yes, yes. we need to rejoice when, when we run into problems because it helps us to learn how to depend on God. It helps us to be patient and to develop character and to trust in God. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah, y'all about to make these in those problems. 
You about to make me shout, Sister Kim. You 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 taking my thunder away from me, honey, because you're on the top of it. You got it. You got it. Watch this, guys. Watch this. I gave you a reading assignment, Philippians chapter four. And I see Sister Kim read it. Philippians chapter four. I gave you uh, verses one through 13 for you to read. Um, but I want to deal with verses, at least verses um, one through eight right now. I might get a little further later, but we're going to deal with one through eight. But I wanted you to read one through 13 to get the full scope here. But I want, want you to see something here in Philippians uh, chapter four, and, and particularly right now, verses one through eight. Uh, I want to read it for you in the King James, and then I'm going to walk back through it and just kind of paraphrase for it and kind of uh, break it down a little bit for us. Listen to what, what Paul says in Philippians chapter four, verse one through eight in the King James. And this is Paul dealing with the Philippian church, okay? Therefore, my beloved brethren, beloved and longed for, my joy, watch this now, my joy and crown, this is how Paul is referring to these brothers and sisters. They're his joy and his crown. Watch this. He says, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Odious, and beseech Sintichi. He says that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, other my yoke fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Now, I'm not going to argue about who that yoke fellow is. We're not going to get into that. We know whoever it was, it was, a, it was one who worked alongside with Paul. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. There it is, Sister Kim. Let your moderation be known unto all men. All right? The Lord is at hand. Be careful for what? nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, here it is, which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now watch this, beloved. Let's take a walk through this, if you would. Walk, walk back with me through this text. Um, and if you get to the New Living Translation, you'll see the you'll see the paraphrase very well broken down for us and for our understanding. In verse one, what Paul is literally saying to recap that verse number one, Paul is saying, "Listen, in order to deal with our troubles, in order to deal with our problems, um, Paul says, paraphrasing here, to stay true to the Lord, to be faithful, to be faithful." Uh, that sound familiar? It sounds familiar to what Sister Connie said. Uh, uh, you know, God knows best. Pray about it. You don't pray to God unless you're trusting him. If you're not going to trust God, don't pray. If you're going to pray, uh, Sister Dalit, don't. if you're going to pray, then don't doubt God. You got to trust him. Uh, Sister, Sister Kim says uh, to trust God no matter what. You can't trust God without being faithful. You can't trust him without being faithful. So Paul says, one of the first things Paul tells this Philippian church, that when you got problems going on, and he's going to talk about particularly some problems with these two sisters that, was, that were part of his yoke fellow group, uh, he says, the first thing you want to do when you're dealing with problems, stay true to the Lord. But why is it, Brother Marcus, give me, give me their face. I want to see their faces here. I want, listen, I want to ask you, why is it, why do you think that people, when they start of having issues in life. They start having problems in life. And I don't care what arena it's in. If it's in corporate America, in their careers, their job, if it's in their home with their spouse, if it's with their children or with their siblings. And some people are having problems with their parents even. Thank God you still got parents if you're grown and you're alive and well, uh, you, and you got parents, thank God. But whatever these problems, sometimes they're problems in the church. But what I just don't understand, and I'm going to get to it a little bit more in the nitty gritty later, is that we tend to turn from God. But Paul says what you need to do when you're in trouble, when you're facing trouble, when you're headed to trouble, and in order to get out of trouble, what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is stay true to God. Remain faithful. 
Somebody put that in the chat for me tonight. Remain faithful. We need to remain faithful, all right? Remain faithful. In, in verse two, what Paul says, that we need to learn how to deal with the problems and to address problems between members. We don't need to be going around talking about each other behind their back. If I got a problem with Brother Marcus, I need to go to Marcus and to Marcus alone. If I got a problem with Sister Faye, I need to go to Sister Faye and to Sister Faye, Sister Faye alone. We're not going to get the problem solved by going around talking to everybody except the one who we got the issue with. Paul says, deal with the problem. Address the problem that's going on between members. In verse three, Paul says, get help from fellow Christians. This sounds like what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 18. If you got a fault against a brother, go to him and him alone. If he don't hear you, take two or three more with you. That truth may be established. If he don't hear them, then bring it to the church. He says, get help. Don't sit around dealing with your problems by yourself. If you've been trying to fix it and you can't fix it, and you, you're getting deeper in your problem, you need to get help. You need to get help. And then in verse four, here it is, what Sister Kim was talking about here. Paul is saying, look, Paul didn't just say, have some joy. What Paul is literally saying in times of trouble, he's really saying, be full of joy. Not happiness, but joy. Paul, what do you mean? I'm going through some troubles. I'm going through some issues. I got an issue with my brother in Christ. I got an issue with my sister in Christ. I'm going through some challenges. What do you mean have joy and not happiness? Well, we all know this by now. Happiness is dependent on what's happening. There has to be something uh, that you uh, desire, something that you like, something that please you in order to make you happy. But see, joy is not, is not born on the outside of man. Joy, real joy, is born on the inside of man, all right? So Paul says, you got to have joy. And what happens is, Paul says in this text, that when we have joy, that joy comes out in your celebration of God, in your celebration and praise of God, all right? And the reason why we want to be joyful and the reason why we want to praise God during our time of, uh, of trouble and problems is because if we truly look at it, it could be worse. I wish I had just one person to type that in the chat. It could be worse. I don't know about you, but if you ever take your problem, and I don't care what you're going through, if you ever take your problem and look at it through a spiritual eye, you, it'll come to your heart and mind and help you understand that it could be worse. I don't care how dreadful it is. I don't care how dark the night is. I don't care what problem you're going through. It could be worse. That's enough right there to, to praise God and to thank God for. I lost my car. I was in a terrible accident. You could have lost your life. I lost my house to a fire but you're allowed to tell about it. You could have been dead, all right? There is always something for a child of God. If they survive or if they are surviving, which means they're still going through and not stuck in, there is always something for you to praise God for. And there's always something that you could have joy for if you are a child of God and you are going through something. And that's what we need to understand about the child of God. The child of God is never in anything. To just be in it means you're making no progress. The child of God goes through storms. They go through the valley of the shadow of death. They go through trials. They go through temptations. All right? In verse 5, Paul says that we need to remember that the judgment of God is coming. The judgment is coming. No matter what, we need to understand that. We need to remember that, and we need to ask for help. King James said it this way, let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand, all right? Let your moderation be known unto men, all right? We got to open our mouths and, 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 and be kind 
and, and let our situation be known to men. And remember, we're referring, when we say men, we're referring to those who are Christians, all right? And then in verse six, here's what Paul literally suggests to the Philippians. He literally suggests, look, don't worry about nothing, but pray about everything. That's really what he's saying. He said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything and always. That's what Sister Connie was telling us, that we need to remember to pray to God. King James said this way, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. All right? Now watch this. Notice the results. Notice the results. When you do all of the aforementioned that we just talked about, notice the results in verse number seven. It is then that you will experience God's peace. It is then that you will experience God's peace. Watch this which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and, and, and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, don't miss the conditional clause. Don't miss the conditional clause. If you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, you will, no matter what you're going through, God will bring you to a place of peace that will surpass even your own understanding. You won't know why you can't cry anymore. You, you, won't, you won't notice when that enemy won't affect you the same way anymore. God will grow you up in Christ and give you the strength and the fervor you need and give you the peace that you need that when other people see you going through things, they will say things to you like this. Oh my goodness, how are you doing it? They'll say things like, honey, did you see uh, Brother Brown? He just lost his wife, but he, he looks like he, he looks like he doing all right. I am a living witness, brothers and sisters. I am a living witness that there is nothing, there is no problem that God cannot bring you through. It's not a cliche when you hear mature saints say to you, there's nothing God won't bring you to that he doesn't have the power to bring you through. That's not a cliche. That's part of the glory of God. That's part of his character. That's part of his glory. That's what really glory is in a word is his character. That's what he's known for. God is a miracle worker. God is a way maker. Oh, I wish I had somebody who would just testify in the chat tonight. He is a miracle worker. He is a way maker. That's God's job to make a way out of no way. That's God's job to bring you to the valley of the shadow of death, but he's your keeper. That's God's job to make you lie down in green pastures. You know why he takes you to green pastures because it is in green pastures where you receive your nourishment. That's God's job. So the conditional clause here, Paul says you'll get this peace as you live, here's the clause, as you live in Christ. Verse seven, you, you have to be in Christ, beloved. You have to be in Christ. You cannot obtain and enjoy the same uh, mercies 
that the child of God receives. You, you can't do it. If you could do that, if you can obtain the same mercies outside of Christ that I received in Christ, what was the purpose of his dying? What is the purpose of him saying in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. If you can get your rest out there, why is Christ saying, come to me? Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. Find meat lowly and hard and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. If you can handle it all out there, you get all of God's grace, all of his mercy out there, why does he say, come to me? Why did... Why does scripture say that God sent his son into the world that by him man will be saved? If you can have all that I have outside of faith. Beloved, but then Apostle Paul gives one final instruction. He gives one final set of instructions on how to handle your problems so your problems won't handle you. You do know there's a difference. You do know there's a difference, Brother Paul, handling your problems and your problems handling you. There is a difference. That's like your children. You know, uh, we would be going through the grocery stores or out at the mall somewhere and, you know, four little boys, because David came along two years right behind them. So it really was like we had quads, not, not triplets, like we had four little boys. And people would see those boys, and they would be so mannerable. They would be so kind, quiet. We're not in the playground. We're in the store. You don't have a job, so you ain't got no business putting your hands on nothing. Nothing. So they, they were taught and they were trained at home like the Bible tells us to do. So it was nice, quiet boys when we're in the store. No running around. This ain't the playground. Don't touch nothing because you ain't got a job. And people will come up. Oh, my goodness. They're so well behaved. Oh, my goodness. How you get them to behave like that? How you good? And I loved it. I loved it. I, I love looking in their face saying, because I'm the parent. I'm the parent. They're the child. That's how we handle this in my house. I'm the parent. My kids don't send me to my room. The parents that's out of control, kids running all over the house, tearing up the house, and I'm going to my room. I can't watch my, my movie. I can't. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. Nicholas on here. Say amen, Nicholas, when you can. He know I'm telling the truth. Amen. No, no, no. Amen. Listen. Listen, we have to learn. Paul is about to show us in verse eight how to handle our problems so our problems won't handle us. Look at what he says in Philippians 4, verse eight. Notice he says, and now. In the King James, he says, finally. After all, he's giving you all this other instruction. He said, and finally. Dear brothers and sisters, one final thing Paul says. Here's what you need to do to handle your problems tonight. Excuse me. He says, fix your thoughts on what is true. You see that in your Bibles? He said, fix your thoughts on what is true. All right. He says, on what is honorable. That word honorable there, if you want to do your research later, the strong reference number is 4586. 4586 for those who are taking notes. If you want to go back on the internet or you have a you have a strong reference book at home. Um, it is Simnos. Simnos is the word. S-E-M-N-O-S. Simnos. And this word honorable means that which is reverend. Reverend. R-E-V-R-E-D. Uh, E-N-D. Excuse me. That which is dignified of venerable. V-E-N-E-R-A-B-L-E. -E -E, venerable. That which is worthy of honor. We know honor is high respect and great esteem. Paul is saying, fix your thoughts, your mind, on what's true. You want to know why so much hell is going on in our political world? 
is because there are people who are not only spewing out lies, but there are people who are fixing their mind on lies. That's why there's no peace. Paul is trying to tell you how to get to peace. If you want peace, keep fix your mind on truth. Those things that are honorable. All right. He then says, fix your mind on things that are right. Not wrong, but things that are right. What do you mean right, Brother Miles? Things that are righteous. 1342 is the strong reference number for that word there, righteous. All right. Dikaios. Dikaios. D-I-K-A-I-O-S. D-I-K-A-I-O-S. Dikaios. All right. That which is right. That's what you need to focus on. That thing that is righteous. What is righteous? That which is right in the eyesight of God. The word of God. That's what you got to keep your mind on. All right. What else should your mind be fixed on? He says that which is pure. That which is pure. All right. Hagnos. Strong reference number 53. Hagnos. H-A-G-N-O-S. H-A-G-N-O-S. What is pure? That which is not defiled. That which is not mixed. Uh, or, un, or adulterated, all right? That which is pure is that which is free from ceremonial defilement. That which is holy or sacred. Brother Miles, what do you mean? What does the Bible mean with ceremonial defilement? You know what that means? That means going through a ritual with no real intent of the heart. And see, that's why the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, when he says, but he that drinketh unworthily and eateth unworthily, drinketh damnation to himself because you don't take the, the, take the Lord's Supper worthily. All that means is with the right frame of mind and honoring God. I am doing this as a memorial to Christ. I'm not getting a snack because the preacher has been preaching too long. It's not a it's not a snack, a cracker and juice. All right. It's not, well, this is just something we do every Sunday. No. You do it with honor. You observe it because it's that which is righteous, that which is pure. Then he says, fix your mind on that which is lovely. We got further than I thought we would. Put fix your mind on that which is lovely. The word there is 4375. It's the strong reference number, 4375. <clears throat> Prosphiles. P-R-O-S-P-H-I-L-I-E-S. -E Again, P-R-O-S-P-H-I-L-I-E-S. The phonetic spelling is P R O S dash F E E dash L A C E. Prosphilase. This is the word for lovely. He says, keep your mind focused on those things which is lovely. What are you saying, Paul? Those things which are pleasing, acceptable, and agreeable. To who? Not to you. <laughs> not to you. You got to keep it in the context. He's talking about the things that are of God. All right. And then he says things that are admirable. Things that are admirable. 2163 is the word there. 2163. You famous. You famous. E U P H E. M O S. Again, that's E U P H E M O S. The phonetic spelling is Y O O dash F A Y dash M O S. You famous. And the thing he wants you to keep your mind on that's admirable, that which is well reported of. 
spoken in a kindly spirit. That's which is reputable. That which is celebratory or laudable, the word of God. Paul says, think about these things that are excellent and they are worthy of praise. Now, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. When he says, think about these things that are excellent and are worthy of praise, why do you think Paul say that? Why, why does he say that? All right. Why does he say that? He said it this way in the King James, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Then he get down to the part, part, the bottom of it. He says, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. All right. Why does Paul say that? Here's why he says it. Because if we keep our mind in the right place, it's going to provoke praise to God. Because God is worthy. When your mind is stayed on the word of God, because it's honorable, the word of God is true. The word of God is right. The word of God is pure. The word of God is lovely, which means it's pleasing and agreeable. Agreeable for what with man? For salvation, to deliver man from sin. The word of God is at Admir ad admirable all right it's admirable when we think on these things it should provoke praise from the child of god it should provoke praise from the child of god oh my time is well spent i'm a minute over but we'll, we'll get into this next week i'm gonna get into this because i want you to write in your notes we'll pick it up right here write in your notes and you've heard me say this before but i'll say it over and over again, as many times it needs to be said, here's what we'll pick up next week. It's about having the right perspective. That's why Paul, Brother Marcus, that's why he's dealing with the mind. That's why he took all this time, Sister Noten, to talk about what your mind needs to be set on. Because it is the mind of man that governs the body of man. It is the mind of man that builds the character of man. It's the mind of man that control the decisions of man. And how many of you know that it matters what you think? Because what, what you think determines what you believe. What you believe determines what you do. What you do determines how you live. How you live determines how you die. How you die determines how you get up during the resurrection. And how you get up determines whether you go to heaven or hell. It all starts in the mind of man. It all starts in the mind of man. He has to have his thinking right. And Paul said, if you keep your mind on the word of God, you'll have the right frame of mind. And if you have the right frame of mind, you're going to make the right choice. But he says here in verse eight, it ought to provoke some praise. These things are praiseworthy. The word of God is praiseworthy. All right. Any questions, any questions, not comments, but any questions uh, before we close. All right. God bless you. I commend you to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. Uh, I knew I had too many notes. I got about seven pages of notes and we got off page one and half or two. <laughs> but, but I trust and pray you received it tonight, that it was challenging, thought provoking, that it was informative and that it was li uh, life changing for those who needed to be reminded that no matter what trouble you're going through, Keep your mind on the word of God and the word of God will provoke you no matter what you're in. The word of God will provoke you to a place of joy, peace and praise. That's the recap tonight. No matter what you're going through, if you keep your mind stayed on the word, it'll bring you to a place of peace. It'll give you some joy and it'll provoke, provoke praise. That's your recap.
God bless you. Love you. Uh, stay in the Lord. Stay in the Lord. Sister Miles, uh, announcement. Yes, uh, awesome class, uh, Brother Miles. Awesome class tonight. Um, Thank just you like so much. to um, remind you all of our devotion and prayer call on tomorrow. It's the first one of the year. Uh, so, ladies, uh, please join and invite someone else to as well. Thank you. And, and our new calendar should be on our social media uh, platforms. Thank you so much, Sister Miles. Yes, Brother Marcus and his crew has made that available. If you go out on our Facebook page, uh, you'll see the schedule for the ladies' devotion every other Thursday. God bless you, Sister Miles. May he bless you richly and wisdom and the sisters. Um, it's so good to hear uh, how you all are growing together in love and in faith. In faith. And we, and we, we pray, pray for you all. God bless you. Any announcements from any of our leaders? No, I don't have any. No, no all right. Okay. Um, I do wanna announce this. Um, there are some items in our fellowship hall, uh, thankful, so thankful to Brother Spence who handles our benevolence. Um, there are some items, a few items in the uh, fellowship hall. There's some Gatorade. There's some other uh, health drinks that are there. There are some cookies. No, Sister Miles, I didn't bother a box of those cookies. I didn't get them, but there's some cookies there. Uh, there's some cereal there. There's two large boxes that we received uh, of, of goods uh, for um, for New Year's. And there's two boxes still there. Um, there's two turkeys still left. If you know of anybody who needs um, any of these things, uh, they're here for a blessing for you. And we thank Brother Spence and his ministry um, uh, making this possible for us. All right. Um, Brother Marcus, you have any prayer requests? No, nobody requested on the on the prayer email. All right. All right, tonight, then we're going to ask, uh, ask you, Brother Marcus, if you would, if you would dismiss us and we'll get ready for our, get ready for our uh, fellowship. Let us bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we come and Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that uh, that you've blessed us to this point to be able to come and to study your word again. And uh, Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for who you are in the midst of everything that's going on, Heavenly Father, that you are still in the blessing business and that you still are, are taking care of us, Heavenly Father. We don't take it for granted. Heavenly Father, help us to maintain that relationship with you. Uh, that we talked about. Help us to uh, to, to focus on um, everything that comes up in our lives, to uh, putting it in your hands, trusting you, Heavenly Father, all those things that we talked about tonight. Heavenly Father, bless those that are not on uh, the class tonight, Heavenly Father, for various reasons. We have some that are sick, some that are traveling, and some that are just uh, out, of, out of place, Heavenly Father. But whatever the situation, you're able in each and every situation. So bless them. Bless Brother Miles and Sister Miles in their ministry, Heavenly Father. Uh, bless us as a, a congregation uh, that we uh, uh, put forward our best effort and do what you would have us to, to, to do to be those people that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with us uh, as we uh, conclude this class, Heavenly Father, but uh, help us as we go uh, each day for the rest of this week until the next time that we're able to be together again, that uh, we remain close to you, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Unmute yourselves and share some love. Show some love to somebody tonight. Amen. Good to see you, Jim.